think art and politics, the, the intersection of it, has always been important, but I think now it's being recognized um, and people are thinking about it a lot more. Uh, I think as people start to become more aware of the world and other people's existence, they start to understand a little bit better and realize that you don't do anything in a vacuum. You can hide yourself away in a studio and say you're making abstract paintings, but that decision speaks volumes. And I'm not even being critical of abstract art. There's some of it that I like. This idea that you can kind of like exist or make work in this space that has no meaning other than you know some sort of like aesthetic ideas, I think is, um, I mean, it's bullshit. You're lying to yourself uh, for no reason, really. I'm Oasa DuVernay. My name is Mildred Beltry. The Brooklyn High Art Machine. Oasa and I are neighbors, and we've been neighbors for over 20 years now, as we started sort of drawing together in like a, just a friendly way. We found that that activity really had an effect of, um, I guess, deepening the friendship and also giving us a different way to be together that we thought would be nice to extend to people outside and see what would happen with that. And we started having these drawing and sewing nights and decided to try and extend that neighborly friendship um, to the rest of our neighbors. So in the summer of 2010, we went outside and we started making art with our neighbors. There's different stories about how the Brooklyn <laughs> Art Machine came up. I thought Oasis's daughter came up with it. I guess it was built on that, this machine kills fascists, so she just liked that idea. With Brooklyn High Art Machine, we've tried so many different things. The fence weaving in particular, we started out using just old bed sheets. We took our kids to the park and she like pulls this sheet out of her bag and she's just like, I want to start tearing this into strips so we can weave something into the fence. And then eventually we realized that gross grain ribbon um, made our lives a lot easier. For the past few years, we've been weaving the fence just with this gross grain ribbon. I'm pretty new to Lucille Clifton's um, poetry and just in doing research for this project I came across this poem and it really spoke to the moment for me. It's about resilience and finding strength and joy in that resilience but still very much about the struggle that black women in particular have to go through just to stay alive every day. Come celebrate with me that every day something has tried to kill me and has failed. When I look at this quote, I feel like a rephrasing of that quote could just be, we are still here, right? We, we persisted. Public projects like the one here, or Brick, we always try to think of some way that it can, like mark it as a place where maybe people can gather and something can happen that's a little bit out of the ordinary. We're at the Prospect Park Bandshell, and we're closer to this part of Brooklyn that is very white and very wealthy. and they get to choose how they see us and what they want to celebrate about us. You know, just picking and choosing what they find to be good about us. And I much rather remind them that every day something or someone is trying to kill us. While there is now an emphasis on the Black Lives Matter movement, I feel like there's always been a Black Lives Matter movement. It has a name now. I think there's a highlighting of that, of those ideas and that in this moment, again, because of the naming, but I think the, the feeling, I think, was being put forth in this poem, or if we look to the history of black struggle, it has always been about that kind of proclamation, right? Like it's taken different forms. Come spring, we, you know, we start gathering our thoughts and our ideas about what we want to say to our community, trying to read the pulse um, or read the room. Uh, of the neighborhood and understand what people need to or want to hear. So we come up with a message and sometimes it's words of our own, sometimes it's from a poet. Art has two functions. One, a drawing, right? Like its job is to be interesting to look at, like number one. And then second, that it's important to figure out what you want to communicate and who you want to communicate it to. And so it's not so much prescribing about what sort of message that should be, but that, you know, there's 
There's conversations going on everywhere. It's the artist's job to figure out what conversation they want to be a part of, and then what do they have to contribute to that conversation with their work. I think the message says it all. I want people to celebrate survival. There's so much pain right now in the world, but there's also space for joy. And I think it's something that the black community has mastered regardless of the pain and the oppression, we figured out how to still find joy. And I think that that is something um, that everyone can learn from and hopefully see and understand. And I hope it's something that we can understand about ourselves as well.